Good afternoon, students. Now here we have the sulci and gyri demonstration of the brain. Now before we start with sulci and gyri, it is very important to note that the first sulcus to develop in the fetal brain will be this sulcus, which is known as the lateral sulcus between temporal lobe and the frontal and parietal lobe. So this lateral sulcus where I am putting my thumb, will develop in the fourth month of fetal life. Later on, there will be development of central sulcus. This is the central sulcus and parieto-occipital sulcus, which I will show you in the medial surface. So, central and parieto-occipital sulcus will develop in the sixth month. Now, we come to the straight away, the types of various sulci, which is very frequently asked as short questions. The entire brain contains basically four types of sulci. The first variety will be limiting sulcus. For example, if this central sulcus is a variety of limiting sulcus, because it will limit anteriorly a granular area, that is motor area, from posterior granular area, which is sensory area. Second variety will be calcarine sulcus. Now, calcarine sulcus will be present here, which I am going to show you on the medial surface when we Discuss medial surface, I will show you here, calcarine. This calcarine sulcus is a part of axial sulcus. The posterior part of calcarine sulcus will be an example of axial sulcus. That is second variety, axial variety. First was limiting, second was axial. Now the same calcarine sulcus anteriorly, it will be functioning as complete sulcus, third variety of sulci, complete. So this calcarine sulcus is complete sulcus. Also, there will be collateral sulcus, which will be inferiorly placed. And inferiorly placed, the collateral sulcus will be present here. This is the collateral sulcus, and this one is the collateral sulcus. So, therefore, this collateral sulcus will function as complete sulcus, because collateral and calcarine both will produce impression or bulge within the lateral ventricle. This collateral sulcus will produce bulge in the inferior horn of lateral ventricle and calcarine sulcus will produce bulge on the posterior horn of lateral ventricle. So it comes under category of complete sulcus. First was limiting, second was axial, third was complete sulcus, fourth variety operculated. If you can see here, this is a small sulcus and here this sulcus is known as lunate sulcus. Now this lunate sulcus comes under category of operculated sulcus because it will separate within its two lips, upper and lower lip, the striate area number 17, striate area and peristriate area number 19 from parastriate area, area number 18 within the floor and the walls. So in short, it is separating three different areas which are concerned with visual sensations. So that lunate sulcus will be under the example of operculated sulcus. So remember limiting sulcus, number one, example central sulcus, number two, axial sulcus, example calcarine sulcus, number three, complete sulcus, example calcarine as well as collateral sulcus, and number four, operculated sulcus, example lunate sulcus. According to embryology, two more varieties of sulci, primary, secondary, all the sulci, will be primary except two which are secondary and those two will be the development of the first sulcus, lateral sulcus, which is an example of secondary sulcus and number two, parieto-occipital sulcus, which is an example of secondary type of sulci. So what is secondary sulci? Where they depend upon other factors. And what is primary sulci? Where they individually develop. Here we completely end the classification of sulci. You have to note down, this is asked is a very common theory question as well as viva question. Now, we start with superior lateral surface, both the superior lateral surfaces. What are the sulci? Very interesting. If we start with approximately few centimeters behind the midpoint between frontal pole and occipital pole. If you pass your thumb here from superior medial border, this is the superior medial border, both the cerebral hemispheres. You can see this sulcus which is going down till the lateral sulcus. This is an extensive sulcus. So therefore, 
with the, both the thumbs I'm tracing it on both the sides, this is central sulcus. This central sulcus is also known as central sulcus of Rolando. And it will be going down till lateral sulcus. And therefore, the central sulcus will be present. It will be starting from the superior medial border, cover the entire superior lateral surface till the lateral sulcus. So this central sulcus of Rolando will be starting once again from few centimeters behind the midpoint between frontal lobe and occipital lobe. Now, in front of central sulcus, if you are able to see, there will be this sulcus, pre-central sulcus. Again here, pre-central sulcus. Immediately in front of central sulcus, pre-central sulcus. Now, in between the pre-central sulcus and central sulcus, this gyrus. This is pre-central gyrus. Here also, pre-central gyrus. Central sulcus, pre-central sulcus, and pre-central gyrus. What does this contain? A granular, smooth, and it will contain motor area. Then frontal lobe. Now, in frontal lobe, primarily there will be presence of superior as well as inferior. Superior and inferior frontal sulcus. Same way over here. Superior sulcus, frontal sulcus, and inferior frontal sulcus. Now, remember one thing, all the sulci gyri of all the brains will be different. It will never be a book picture where we have a straight line. The convolutions <clears throat> will be different. So this is the superior frontal sulcus, inferior frontal sulcus in frontal lobe, which will divide the entire frontal lobe into, this is superior frontal gyrus, this will be middle frontal gyrus, and this will be, this entire portion will be inferior frontal gyrus. So here we have classified the sulci gyri of frontal lobe in front of central sulcus, both the sides. So superior and inferior frontal sulcus, in between this sulci, there will be distribution of superior, middle, and inferior frontal gyri. Now we come to lateral sulcus. Now this lateral sulcus is very important, as I told you before. This lateral sulcus is known as sulcus of Sylvius. Lateral sulcus of Sylvius. And it will start from... Where is it starting from? It is starting from inferior surface. See here. And this inferior surface, this area which I discussed with you previously was anterior perforated substance. So from this anterior perforated substance, which I had discussed with you in the external features of brain, base of the brain, from here, this will start, lateral sulcus. And as it goes above, it will pass forwards and laterally towards this point. And this point is known as Sylvian point. From Sylvian, Sylvian point, it will divide into various sulci, the entire lateral sulci. And those sulci will be see here. Number one, anterior horizontal. Number two, anterior ascending. And number three, posterior. So it will divide into anterior horizontal sulcus, anterior ascending sulcus, and anti, the posterior sulcus, the entire lateral sulcus. Same way on this side. Here also, on opposite side from the anterior perforated substance it is starting, which will go forwards and laterally, towards which point? Sylvian point. From Sylvian point it is dividing into, here you are able to see, this is anterior horizontal, anterior ascending sulcus, and the posterior sulcus. So therefore, since this is the entire inferior frontal lobe, this entire inferior frontal lobe is divided by anterior horizontal and anterior ascending and the posterior into three areas. One, two, three. Same way on this opposite side. Here also we can divide. This inferior frontal gyrus is divided into the area of inferior frontal gyrus present below this anterior horizontal sulcus. This is pars orbitalis. Pars orbitalis. Then the area of inferior frontal gyrus which is present between this anterior horizontal and anterior ascending, this is pars triangularis, pars triangularis. And the area which is present between this posterior sulcus and this one, this is the anterior ascending. So this area will be known as pars posterior. 
So these are the three areas which are present in the inferior frontal gyrus which are divided by the lateral sulcus. Which portions of lateral sulcus? Anterior ascending, anter the anterior horizontal, anterior ascending and posterior. Here we finish the frontal lobe. Now, once again back to central sulcus because we have to discuss parietal lobe. So here, once again, with the two thumbs, this is the central sulcus, which I am tracing it down. Behind this central sulcus, if you are able to concentrate behind these two central sulcus, there will be presence of, here you are able to see, there will be presence of this post-central sulcus. The post-central sulcus. This is the post-central sulcus. Here also, this is the post-central sulcus. So between the post-central sulcus and the central sulcus, so if this is the central sulcus, immediately just behind the central sulcus will be this gyrus, which is known as post-central gyrus. This is the post-central gyrus behind the central sulcus. And behind the post-central gyrus will be post-central sulcus. What is the speciality of post-central gyrus? It contains granular material that is sensory cortex. All the sensory tracts, sensory fibers are relayed here. Post-central gyrus. Behind that is post-central sulcus. Then we come to this intraparietal sulcus, which you are able to differentiate. In intraparietal sulcus. Here also this is the intraparietal sulcus. Therefore, now this complete intraparietal sulcus will divide the parietal lobe into superior parietal lobule, inferior parietal lobule. Here also this intraparietal sulcus will divide into superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule. This much is very important. So therefore the intraparietal sulcus. In parietal lobe we have the intraparietal sulcus dividing into superior and inferior, superior and inferior parietal lobule. Next will be there will be presence of arcus parieto occipitalis. It is an elevated small gyrus in the form of an arc. So it is called arched gyrus. Where is it present? It is present just surrounding the parieto occipital sulcus. And since parieto occipital sulcus is present here, this is the parieto occipital sulcus, this is the parieto occipital sulcus, it is present on the medial surface parieto occipital, but a part of it is extending here on superior lateral surface. So the gyrus which is surrounding this gyrus, which is surrounding this parieto occipital sulcus, I will discuss parieto occipital in the medial surface. So this part of parieto occipital which is extending on superior lateral surf surface, a part of gyrus is surrounding it and this is called arcus parieto occipitalis, arcus parieto occipitalis gyrus. Here we finish the parietal lobe. Now we come to occipital lobe. Now in occipital lobe, you have to concentrate and able to appreciate the first sulcus. And the first sulcus will be present from this arcus parieto occipitalis, arcus parieto occipitalis down, down, it will be extending down. And this sulcus will be known as here also, from arcus parieto occipitalis, it will be extending down here. This will be known as the transverse occipital sulcus. Transverse occipital sulcus. Similarly, now, the most important sulci will be present here. In the occipital lobe, there will be presence of lateral occipital sulcus and this lateral occipital sulcus will divide the entire occipital lobe into superior occipital gyrus, inferior occipital gyrus. Similarly here, this is the lateral occipital sulcus dividing into superior and inferior occipital gyrus. Then the third one which I showed you earlier this is known as the lunate sulcus, the third sulcus in occipital lobe. Lunate sulcus, it is an example of operculated sulcus. I have described with you a few minutes before. This is the lunate sulcus. It will meet medially 
with sulcus calcarine sulcus it will meet the calcarine sulcus medially here we finished the occipital lobe now we come to temporal lobe superior lateral surface remember we are discussing superior lateral surface temporal lobe the entire temporal lobe is divided by presence of superior temporal sulcus and inferior temporal sulcus into superior temporal gyrus middle temporal gyrus inferior temporal gyrus same way on this side this is see how beautiful on this side this is the superior temporal sulcus this is the inferior temporal sulcus this is superior temporal gyrus this is the middle temporal gyrus and this is the inferior temporal gyrus now here the interesting thing which you have to mark will be posterior end of the superior temporal gyrus here it will have an upturned end see it is upturning posteriorly and the posterior end of the posterior see this posterior sulcus will also have an upturned end how beautifully they are seen here so the posterior end of this posterior sulcus what is this posterior sulcus it is continuation of lateral sulcus only so the posterior end of posterior part of lateral sulcus will have an upturned end similarly the posterior part of the superior temporal sulcus will have an upturned end and both the upturned ends surrounding both the upturned ends there will be this arc shaped gyrus see here one and two this arc shaped gyrus will be this is called supra marginal gyrus so this supra marginal gyrus is surrounding the posterior end of the upturned margin of the posterior sulcus this is supra marginal gyrus similarly here this is the posterior upturned end of superior temporal sulcus and the gyrus which is surrounding will be known as angular gyrus supra marginal gyrus angular gyrus here we finish all the sulci gyri of superior lateral surface thank you very much